This video abstract corresponds to our original publication entitled as CD7 Activation Regulates Cytotoxicity-Driven Pathology in Systemic Sclerosis Yielding a Target for Selective Cell Depletion. Systemic sclerosis, or SSC, is characterized by vasculopathy, fibrosis, and autoimmune inflammation. Despite progress in treatment of patients with SSC, still the quality of life of the patients remains poor. So currently only autologous stem cell transplantation is available as a treatment for patients with systemic sclerosis that can induce long-term disease remission. However, this is a very risky treatment and therefore is only available for less than 10% of patients. General immunosuppressive drugs can be effective as a treatment for systemic sclerosis, but they can only halt progression of fibrosis to a limited extent in a limited proportion of patients. So selective depletion or uh, uh, deactivation of activated lymphocytes that are involved in the disease process could uh, offer a selective, a more efficacious and safer treatment approach. Using unsupervised machine learning approaches, we found that cytotoxic T lymphocytes and NK cells are enriched in SSC skin. And when looking at the functionality of those cells, we found that these cell types are uh, showing the pro-fibrosis and pro-inflammation signs. And taking out those cells, doing the differential gene expression analysis between control and SSC patients, we found out that CD7 is a regulated in SSC, and it is being contributed by cytotoxic T lymphocytes and NK cells. And that was a hint for us to use CD7 as a target for systemic sclerosis. Interestingly, CD7 positive cells were highly enriched in the affected skin of patients with stem sclerosis compared to the non affected part. From a clinical point of view, CD7 was highly expressed in patients with early and diffuse disease and it was further correlated with increased skin score. Similarly to our results in the skin, CD7 was also highly upregulated in cytotoxic TNNK cells from patients' lungs. Fibrosis is the main disease hallmark of systemic sclerosis. Thus, we next developed an in vitro 3D collagen contraction model that resembles skin hardening and tightening that is observed in patients with systemic sclerosis. In this model, CD7 positive cells induced higher fibroblast contraction compared to the CD7 negative ones, and this increased contraction was further accompanied by an elevated myofibroblast phenotype. From a therapeutic point of view, targeted elimination of CD3 positive and CD7 positive cytotoxic TNNK cells halted myofibroblast contraction. Finally, we treated a patient with severe end stage uh, diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis with a combination of anti CD3, anti CD7 immunotoxins. Uh, this patient had failed autologous stem cell transplantation. Upon treatment, uh, the circulating and residential T-cells and NK cells uh, uh, were depleted and his CRP, which was very high, normalized. His functional status stabilized and his quality of life also stabilized. This uh, clinical effect was considered meaningful and we even expect a greater effect in patients that are treated in an early disease phase where there is more inflammation and where end-stage fibrosis has not developed yet. In conclusion, our results highlight the key role of co-stimulatory molecules in regulating cytotoxicity-driven pathology in systemic autoimmunity. Targeting CD7 positive cells might be a novel therapeutic approach in mitigating tissue inflammation and fibrosis that is observed in patients with systemic sclerosis. Thanks for watching.